afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. John Belkowitz, and we're here to talk about concrete because it's neat from my head down to my feet. Specifically, going to talk about concrete skate parks today. Did I say barks or parks? I meant to t talk about skate parks. Whether you're what you could do skateboarding, rollerblading, and I even think some kids are on razors, razors. How do you say that? Razors. Razors. I don't know what they are. Um. We just got a, a message from somebody or, or saw a post from somebody on Facebook that they were shot creating a skate park today and my question was what type of mix and the mix that was used was a 35 MPA which a 35 MPA is what 35 MPA times 145 what is that just shy of 5000 PSI 4750 yeah. is that you're just saying yes to 145 times 35, 5,075. So just a little bit over 5,000 PSI for those of you who don't do the European units. Then my next question was, is there anything in the concrete mix to reduce shrinkage and increase resistance to abrasive wear? The reason why I'm asking that is I, as a kid, I used to skate all the time. It might be a bit of a stretch. I wasn't very good at skateboarding. I ended up jumping into rollerblading, which I got a lot better at. And the thing that I was really bad at skateboarding is, especially when you're going down like a sidewalk, an older sidewalk that's got some aggregate that has become exposed due to wear and tear, rain, ice, whatever. If you don't keep your front foot light, what you'll end up doing is hitting a small rock and stop short and fly face first. And I can't tell you how many times I lost the skin on my face, my hands, from doing that falling face forward. Um, what I liked about rollerblading is that I could be a lot lighter and a lot faster to move on those rocks. Now, in a skate park, I have to imagine that there's, and I haven't been to a skate park in decades. I think I had a full head of hair the last time I was in a skate park. That might be a stretch with the full head of hair. Uh, but anyway, um, what I find is, especially in the areas that you have a lot of, uh, of drop-ins, you see that acceleration period or people trying to slow down or either coming up and doing a trick, but there's a lot more abrasive wear and you start seeing that exposed aggregate. Um, that, that, that unfortunate reality is, especially when you have abrasive forces, turning, stopping, taking off, trying to get more power, the first thing that is going to be your line of defense to that abrasive force is that, that, that cementitious paste that's at the surface of your concrete. Now subsurface to that you have a combination of uh, cementitious paste, your hydrated cement pa matrix, as well as sand. Now as you go deeper into that concrete, go from your surface, your subsurface to your body, you're going to start getting your aggregate. So once you start seeing your aggregate, either you've torn off that first layer of defense, you've worn through that la first layer of defense, or might not have an, having to go through the subsurface, it could have been surface, if you're using something like shotcrete where that, that aggregate is closer to the surface than something like a, a hand placed or a, a, a slip form paver placed concrete that then is bowl floated later. Uh, so what I think we should do with our skate park concrete to make them stronger and last longer is start adding chemicals not only to reduce shrinkage and you know a lot of the shrinkage that I'm referring to is sometimes the autogenous shrinkage that is just from self desiccation and poor um, poor um, water collapsing that is internal not really moisture being lost due to the environment or evaporation but just the hydration kinetics and the heat of it taking off so much the other thing is that water loss due to evaporation that overcomes the bleed rate of the concrete and also causes an overcoming of tensile and shear capacity of that concrete and as that concrete hardens and as evaporation increases we see that plastic shrinkage cracking and because of that we create a softer surface to reduce that abrasive wear so things that I would do um, I'm gonna see if I can limit this to top five one I would change up my cementitious I would reduce my cements that are kicking off due to the thermal connects to cement hydration so I'd get away from the type 3 cements go towards a more type 1 type 2 and use a supplementary cementitious material I would go a little crazy with this I would use Medicaid only uh, it's expensive it's hard to get uh, and if you use too much of it you really got to do a dance with the amount of water that you put in your concrete can't starve water and you have to play with your admixtures 
Um, but doing so, adding those supplementary cementitious materials, you can yank out a lot of your, you know, kicking off those thermokinetics, you know, the heat of hydration, and replace it with something that's going to uh, uh, densify your hydrated cement matrix. Second to that, and really first, if I want to put in line with the coolest thing to do, and probably the best thing you can do, but you're not going to remove as much of that cementitious out, is colloidal silica, a very low dosage, anywhere between four and 24 fluid ounces per hundred weight. It could take up for what that class F fly ash would have done back in the days. Class F fly ash, steer the F clear away from that stuff. Did you get it? I made a joke. I said steer the F clear of that, because class F ash. Ah! Ah! So I would use you can't really use that many SCMs. When I say you should use the number one item, when I said you should use Medicaolin, you're not using a commonly sourced uh, supplementary cementitious material. You're using something very expensive and something that probably has to be shipped from out of state. I don't think you should use the old tried and true materials like Class F and Class C ash because we just don't have the quality as well as the volumes that you can rely on to get that product that's going to be stronger and last longer. For that, I would use colloidal silica. Now there are some amazing colloidal silicas out there. You don't have to use a lot of them. They are going to add ex an expense just like Medicaolin will do, but with that, you are truly going to add a hardness to abrasive wear and a reduction to shrinkage that you're not going to see even out of the Medicaolin SCMs. We've done the work, not that they're bad, they just can't do what these nanoparticles can do. From there, I would optimize. Number three, I would optimize the balance between your paste and your granular skeleton. Really play with it and use different aggregates within your granular skeleton to reduce the porosity index of that granular skeleton so you don't need as much paste to get that same fluidity, whether you're doing a shotcrete or a hand placement. Number, what was that, number three? Where are we at, number four? Number four, I would definitely use some high range water reducers at a minimum. There are some great, one, great ones out there that can get your water reduction down by 35%, yet still create that stickiness that keep, keeps your shotcrete on the wall, depending if you're doing a, a, a hor or a vertical wall or even an overhang or I mean, now I'm going into rock climbing walls, but I think you could even see some of those with skate parks. Um, and if you're somebody like Tony Hawk, or if you're somebody, I had a buddy of mine, who built a skate park in his backyard for him and his kids because they skated that much. So if you're like that, even if you're not a public skate park, if you're a private skate park, you want to put it in so that you never have to replace sections of it. Because once you replace sections of it, that's when you're starting to change up the flow of your skate park and creating obstacles that you might not want to have to think about, especially when you're ready to take off on some type of 360 or slide or whatever it is. Um, so that was number four. Number five, it all goes back to toughening and hardening agents. And, and really what it comes down to is choosing your materials wisely using locally sourced materials, especially if you're in California, Arizona, Nevada, is not going to be your best bet, especially if you're putting in a high-end public skate park. Or, did I mind doing something wrong? You're looking at that board. Okay, I thought I was like messing something up. Haley's like giving the board the stink eye here. I just, I'm sorry, I thought I was getting, that's your planning face? Man, I'm scared. Uh, anyway, I didn't mean that in a bad way. Concentrating face. Concentrating face, thank blushing. Um, the fifth thing is any type of raw material that you're using, whether it's um, your, your cementitious or your aggregate. If you're putting all this work into new materials, into colloidal silicas, metacaolins, liquid admixtures, you need to, as well as your people, which I think is also included in that last piece, you've got to do the same thing with your raw materials. And if you're getting sands, if you're getting sands that have an FM, that have a fineness that just plumes up in the air when it's dry. If you can't control your airs, if you're in cold climates, if you can't control your slumps, if you're using rock that's soft and dirty that pulls out of the concrete as it's going through this wear, then you're just spinning your wheels and wasting time and eventually you're gonna be called back to replace that or you're gonna be doing the calling 
to replace that. If you're going to spend the money on making this type of concrete structure, which is not inexpensive, then spend the extra $50 per ton on good rock and sand, as well as good cements, to get you the best concrete that's going to be stronger and last longer, especially with that aggressive environment with skating. And with skating, especially if you skate a lot or it's being used a lot, the wear and tear that you get from the turning, the takeoff, the stopping, is gonna tear that concrete up. And then if you add, if you're in a cold weather environment, like Iowa, Nebraska, or Idaho, then you have your de-icing salts and brines, it's gonna soften up the concrete. So really be picky about what you put in those materials. Pretend you're trying to design for an airfield pavement. And that's when I believe you're designing a good concrete. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notification. Hell, he's awesome. Go concrete. Peanut asphalt.